Welcome to our service of night prayer. This is a quieter, more reflective service intended to be prayed towards the end of the day, a chance to reflect on all that's happened, to commit it to the Lord and to pray for his safekeeping through the night. So I invite you to join in with the words that will come in capital letters as we pray together and then reflect on a passage of scripture. Let's be quiet for a moment and pray. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's say it together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We're continuing to look at the life of David. Previously in the story, David has been made king over the southern tribes of Judah when Saul dies. He then conquers Jerusalem and is made king of the ten northern tribes of Israel too, uniting the two warring kingdoms. Some years later, his son Absalom usurps David and takes the throne. So yet again, David has to go into hiding with his loyal supporters, which include the priests. David and Absalom's relationship has been tempestuous, but David has forgiven his difficult child over and over. Even now, as Absalom is intent on killing his father, David orders that Absalom isn't to be harmed. However, Joab, David's commander-in-chief, takes matters into his own hands and kills Absalom. So here we are at this point. Absalom has been killed. The Israelites are in turmoil and worried about what David will do when he returns. How will he treat those who had rejected him? Which brings us to today's reading, which is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 19, verses 9 to 15. Throughout the tribes of Israel, all the people were arguing among themselves, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled the country to escape from Absalom. And Absalom, who we anointed to rule over us, has died in battle. So why do we say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Zadok and Abiathar, the priests. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his palace, since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters? You are my relatives, my own flesh and blood. So why should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, are you not my own flesh and blood? May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if you are not the commander of my army for life, in place of Joab. He won over the hearts of the men of Judah, so that they were all of one mind. They sent word to the king, Return, you and all your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal, to go out and meet the king, and bring him across the Jordan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The people of the tribes of Israel remembered what David had done for them in the past. They were angry with their elders for putting their trust in Absalom, who only had let them down. There was a lot of bickering and pointing of fingers at those in charge. Isn't that typical of human nature? to look about for someone to blame for our own mistakes. 
but the question they face now is how to win David's favour back. What should the people do, given that they had turned their backs on the king? Their position is little pathetic, for they are powerless against David. David, however, rather than driving home his position, is graceful to all of the people. He uses some smart diplomacy by asking the priests to intervene for him and nudge the elders of Judah to invite David back, rather than David using his army to walk in and take back his throne. And the elders of Judah don't want to be the last of the tribes to invite David back. No doubt they are wary of what David might do. So he allays their fears. Are you not my own flesh and blood? But why does David act so gently? He could take back his throne by right and ride into Jerusalem as a conquering hero. Instead, he is patient and waits for the people to choose him as their king. Which brings us back to Joab and Amasa. Joab was David's nephew and was commander of his army. Amasa, also David's nephew, had been put in charge of the army by Absalom during the rebellion. For David to accept Amasa as his commander-in-chief was a stroke of pure political shrewdness, as he will have the army on his side. But it is also a punishment for Joab, who disobeyed the king. So what can we learn? Well, firstly, that God's plans will not be thwarted by the whims of people. God had made David king and the schemes of wicked people could not remain. Secondly, that like David, God has the capacity to forgive those that he loves over and over again. And he loves us. Thirdly, that God will not force us to follow him but will remain patient and wait for us to return to him and invite him into our lives. And fourthly, that we are to pursue peace with our enemies and allow God to deal with them. God made a promise to David that he would be king. What has God promised us? For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your servant David, though a broken and sometimes foolish man, was always ready to put his faith in you. We know that you walked with him throughout his life. Lord, walk with us through the darkness. We come before you, also broken and foolish, and pledge anew to trust and follow you. Lord, lead us and refresh us. Help us when we turn away. Forgive us when we forget your love for us. Help us to reflect the light of your dear Son to the world that so desperately needs it. Lord, inspire us and teach us to love as you love. Give us the light of life. Amen. And so let's pray together. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. 
and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of his creation. And may our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen.